So as you can see, what we've done is we've created a proxy mesh, making sure that the geometry at the back is flat, which has allowed us to cheat a little bit and get this nice flat blade of feathers at the back here. What we need to do now is add a bit more variety to these because they're a bit boring and uh, uniform. And what we can do is we can start to adjust some of these sliders under this primitives tab. Now spacing, as uh, I mentioned before, obviously if we make that 20, it's just going to spread them out even further, which results in less or fewer feathers. If we have it set at 10, that gives us a nice idea. And then once we've got all the settings in place, we can always drop that down to five just to add more feathers in there. And as you can see, using this approach allows us to quickly add and remove feathers rather than having to go in and physically place these feathers ourselves. So let's move down to the primitive attributes. And this is basically what we're going to start adjusting to get the shape of our wing. So obviously we can adjust the length like so. We can adjust the width to make them fatter or thinner. And the depth and so on and so on. You've got uh, these here to adjust the, the orientation, tilt U, tilt V, twist them and also rotate them around the surface normal. So if we reset all those so the first thing we want to do is, if you look at a normal wing, the feathers get longer at the end and shorter at the beginning. But the problem is if we adjust the length, it's doing all of them. There's not a lot we can do there. So what do we do? Well, instead, we could open the expression editor. And as you can see here, we have A equals one. And this basically is the slider value which is here with a minimum and a maximum so that's defining this slider here but what we can also do is say but let's influence whatever the sliders doing um, and maybe use the length of the primitive to maybe adjust the length of the feathers so now we can maybe say, so A, where is it, times by, and then if we put in the dollar sign, it brings up this handy menu here of all sorts of uh, variables that we can play around with. So U, the U parameter of the underlying surface, the V parameters of the underlying surface, and this goes all the way down here. So there's lots and lots of things to play around with. So let's have a look. So P is the surface point at which the primitive is being, is being evaluated. So that could work in this instance. If we know the surface where the primitive is being evaluated, we could maybe say, well, you know, if the surface point is zero here, then it's times by zero. If it's one here, then times by one or something similar. So we could try using P. So A is times by P. So let's accept that and see what we get. So that looks a bit wild. So let's just scale that right back down. Now that's obviously not working because it's too big, but what you can see is we've got, these are much longer here than they are down here. So let's go back to our expression and we can maybe turn that down a bit. So if we put this into brackets, we sort of, we're saying the slider value is times by the point where the primitive is on the surface, but also divide that value, let's say by 50, accept. So that's a lot smart, shorter. And now as you can see, as we adjust this, we're getting feathers longer at the end and shorter at the beginning. So just by adding in that very simple expression there, we've managed to get just a little bit of variety into that. So we could even 
play around with this a little bit more. So let's just see what else we could. Let's try, see what the V or maybe the U accept. So as you can see, that's not done much. And this is what you should do really. You should, rather than follow along with exactly what I'm doing, maybe just have an experiment. So let's try the V accept. You know, that sort of thing. And up here we have samples, which you can play around with. And in the help menu, it even explains what each of these does, you know, and you can also refer to what the variables do here. Um, so don't be afraid of expressions, especially in XGen. There's a lot in there to help you out, lots of uh, guidance. And obviously, once you get, if you get the hang of expressions in XGen, you can use them in other areas of Maya as well. So let's set that back to P. Um, but what we might do instead is set it to pref instead, the reference surface point at which the primitive is being evaluated. And we're going to do that because later on when we mirror this, and put it onto the right wing, it won't work properly because it'll be, the figures will be different for this sort of side. Um, although actually, let's leave it at P for now because that's exactly what we want. And then when we come to do the other wing later on, and I can, I can explain it better then, sort of why we change the expression to adapt for that. But for now, we'll just do times P, which is the point at which the feather is going to be on this surface and then we'll divide it by 50 just to reduce that value down and make it a bit more manageable. So let's just copy that, press Control C and accept it. Let's drop that back down to one, maybe a little bit shorter. So again, we have another problem now because these are shorter at the beginning and longer at the end we've got them, they're quite fat at the beginning and thin at the end. So again, we could go in and use an expression to help us. So what happens if we just paste the same one in? Click accept, drop that width down. So now we've got thinner feathers at the beginning and they're getting fatter the longer we get along the distance. So maybe we increase that value so they're not getting as fat. Maybe 75, accept. But then remember, actually let's set that to 60 maybe. That's better. But remember, we can also increase the spacing again, set that to five, just to add more feathers into there. And we can continue on just adding in that simple expression into other areas just to experiment. We could add it into the depth so they start off thinner and they get thicker towards the end. We could add it into the tilt as well because we want the feathers at the end to tilt out a little bit further. So let's see what happens if we add that same expression in here. Accept. So now they're not tilting much at the beginning, but they're tilting more towards the end. Again, we're just adding in that little bit of variety into the wing. Now the tilt V, we don't really want to do much there. The twist, again, you might want them to twist a bit more as they're getting out towards the end. Let's just change that around then. That's better, just flattening that out. So that's a little bit better. That's it. And of course, all these can be animated. So as you're animating your horse flying, you can animate these to uh, move and flow around or flap. Something you'd find it a bit more difficult to do if you'd placed all these by hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
maybe leave you to play around with these attributes until you get something that you're happy with with the flow of the wing like so. I'm going to continue tweaking these a little bit too. Um, and what we'll do is in the next video we'll just do the same again but we'll start working on the next layer of feathers and so on and so on until we've built up the whole wing. So continue to tweak and play around with that and I'll see you in the next video.